Hey everyone, Azura here. Today we're going to be talking about some tanking tips and tricks. For the ones who just started getting into tanking and want a more basic guide, aka Art has made an excellent video about that and I'll put the link in the description below. In this video, we're going to discuss about some more advanced strategies. The video will be divided into several sections, going over awareness, positioning, weak spots, offensive and defensive considerations. After watching the video, if any of you have more useful tips and strategies, or if you have spotted mistakes in this video, please let me know in the comment section so I can also learn something new. We will start off with awareness and positioning. First, this is something that I do when playing both infantry and armor. I look at the minimap all the time. It gives a lot of useful information. It can tell me where the enemies can be, especially if they are spotted by your teammates. Knowing which flags your team and your teammates are holding will also let you predict where the threats are coming from. Tip number 2. Move with a purpose. That is to either advance at the edge of the map, or move from cover to cover. Always have a plan of escape if things don't go as expected. It is preferable that you do not move in the middle of the field without teammates to back you up or other favorable terrain for cover. Tip number 3. Be aware of hillcrest positions. There are pros and cons to this position. The pro would be that it has an excellent viewing angle for observation. It is also more difficult for enemies to adjust their overshots since they would go much over. You can also escape backwards using the hillcrest as cover. But the disadvantage of this position is that your tank may be silhouetted against the sky, making you more noticeable by the enemies. In this clip, the Stuk 4 could have reversed to go behind the hill for repair, but he made a mistake by staying at the hillcrest position. Tip number 4. Flanking. If your teammates are mostly gathering along a line facing the enemy, if possible, achieving a flanking position to the side can surprise the enemy. They'll also have difficulty maneuvering against or escaping from flanking fire. They're also exposing their side armor, which has the largest surface area, as well as their weak points, such as their tracks. However, when attempting to flank, you must also be aware of your own flank. If there are enemies deep to their defense line, you may be entirely exposed. Here you can see that I was trying to flank to Tiger Tank, but there are actually more enemies deep to their defense line, which forced me to retreat. The next part of the video will be about weak spots. While many players know the existence of weak spots, they forget or do not place enough emphasis on the angle of attack. This is very important because most fights are very close, and you want to use every strategy in your toolkit to win the fight. We'll be talking about where to hit the enemy depending on what type of vehicle they are, and what position you are relative to them. For light tanks, which are the stack count and the 38T, they have a 1.67 times multiplier when hitting their turrets, side and rear. But one thing to note here is that the side and rear only get a 1.67 times multiplier if the angle of attack exceeds 85 degrees. This is often not achievable. The turret, however, has a same multiplier independent of which angle it is. So when you come across a light tank, you should always aim at the turrets for maximum damage. For medium tanks, it is almost always best to hit the rear if possible due to a very forgiving angle of attack as well as a very high multiplier of 2.2. Hitting their flank as long as you can get a relatively perpendicular shot would be the next option. If they're at an odd angle, it is mostly advisable to hit the turrets because the angle of attack does not matter. You can also consider hitting their front armor. When coming up against a Stuk 4, the front armor is more protected than the other medium tanks. It also does not have a turret, so having a good angle of attack will be needed. Their side and rear armor are once again the same as that of the other medium tanks, so the best way to kill a Stuk would be to flank them. The heavy tanks are a little more complicated, so I'll discuss them separately. Let's start off with the Tiger. It is more forgiving in terms of angle of attack compared to the other tanks. In a head-to-head -head fight, aiming at their front armor would likely give you more consistent damage. Its rear and side are the weakest parts just like any other tanks. If it is at an odd angle, you should aim at the turrets for the 1.25x multiplier. One caveat is that there is a mendlet in front of the turrets. 
it drastically decreases the incoming damage, so if a tiger is facing you directly, you may need to aim at the very edge of the turret or its body depending on the angle relative to you. I will show you two clips. The first one is when I was aiming at the mantlet, which resulted in 16 damage per shot. Then the next clip shows that when I was aiming at the side of the turret, it resulted in 22 damage per shot. We will now move to the Churchill Mark 7. If possible, aiming at the back and the side would be preferable. It is heavily armored in the front, and even if you get a perfectly placed shot, it would be no different than hitting the turrets. So I recommend that if you cannot get a good shot on the side of the track, aim at the turrets. For the Churchill Gun Carrier, it is similar to the Churchill Mark 7, but it does not have a fail-safe area to hit because it does not have a turret. So when going against a gun carrier, Having a good angle of attack is paramount. We'll also go over the squad reinforcement tanks, which are the Churchill Crocodile and the Sturm Tiger. For the Crocodile, it is heavily armored on all sides. Hitting its rear dead on would only give a 1.2 times multiplier. It also has a toad supply crate behind it to absorb some damage. The next best area would be its side if you can land a shot with good angle of attack. Otherwise, aim at the turrets for all other scenarios. The Sturm Tiger is also quite interesting. It is quite heavily armored, but not as much as that of the crocodile. If given the opportunity, try to hit its rear or its side for maximum damage. I do want to emphasize that if you are hitting its side, aim for the body of the tank instead of the casemates, which is the entire housing around the cannon. It only gives a 1x multiplier as opposed to the 1.2x on the side. Now we'll go over some other offensive considerations. I did mention earlier that for most tanks, you should hit the front armor if they're directly facing you. But if you are a good shot or if you like to take risk of possibly missing, you can consider first disabling their tracks. This would make it more difficult for them to escape. You can also deal more damage than hitting the front armor or the turrets for all other tanks other than light tanks, because it gives the same multiplier of the side armor. I also mentioned earlier that hitting the turrets of the light tanks at all times would be preferable for maximum damage. But if you want to prevent their escape, disabling their tracks or engine should also be considered. If you are facing their flank, a perpendicular shot against their side armor would deal the most damage. Hitting their tracks will also have the same multiplier. It will also prevent your target from escaping. If they try to reverse, which is their natural tendency to do so, your back would rotate towards you due to the unbalanced power output if they do not actively counter for it. This will make their turrets rotate away from you, making it harder for them to return fire. We will now discuss a few points regarding defensive strategies. First, use any terrain, buildings, vegetation as concealments and camouflage. Choose a background with similar shape and color of your tank with the least amount of contrast. This will make your location much harder to detect. Here are two clips of the enemy using this strategy. I did ultimately win the first fight but took a considerable amount of time to locate him. For the second clip, it was very difficult to locate enemies which ultimately led to my destruction. Strategy number two, firing cover. You can think of this as peekaboo. Basically, you fire and escape between reloads. You can do this around the building in a more urban setting, or you can use the hilltop like the video in the background. You can also time the enemy's shots by trying to dodge right before they fire. The next will be armor angling. This is especially true for heavy tanks. Moving around trying to dodge rounds would not be your strong suit. In addition to using any objects to help provide cover, angling your armor to not directly face an enemy will make it harder for them to destroy you. I would aim for roughly a 30 to 40 degree angle for best results. In the clip here, you can see here that it was very difficult to land a solid hit on the tank. 
I will also show an illustration here to describe the strategy. Similar to armor angling, the side scraping technique is used to angle your side armor at a steep angle towards the enemy, while protecting your front armor with a building or a large obstacle. In this clip, while the Churchill gun carrier is not the best tank to use this tactic due to its forward-placed gun and the lack of a turret, you can see how if he stayed at this location, my rounds would likely continue to ricochet. I will also show an illustration here to describe the strategy. You are essentially using the side armor as bait and to increase the chance that the incoming rounds will ricochet. It is more effective against AP rounds, and the potential downside is that your tracks may be disabled. Last but not least, defending a push. I will show you an illustration first. When an enemy tries to flank you by pushing your side, you will want to reverse while rotating. This will keep the front of your tank facing them, making it much harder for them to hit your weak spots. I will show you two clips of that in action. And that's it for this guide. I hope you find this useful and up your game fighting other tanks. Please consider sharing and liking the video. Please also consider subscribing to the channel if you think the video has earned it. Have a good day and I'll see you all next time.